got the curtains hung up in the car. It was really, really hard, and it's going to take a long time to put them up and take them down. I tried many different ways. I watched many different YouTube videos, and in order to keep them removable, in order to keep them removable but usable, I decided to go with this paracord held up on here with bungee cords. So this is paracord here, and here's where it's connected. And then it goes all around the, it goes all around the entire length of the car. Let me try to get in here. It's hard for me to get into this vehicle. It goes all around the length of the car and it's held up by bungee clips. Let's see this side. It's held up by bungee clips. And the only thing I could do, I tried many different things to get this to stay up, but the only thing that's going to work is these little pieces of cord tying it. So it's going to take forever to take them up and down. But while I was in here working, it did keep the vehicle significantly cooler. So here's what I'm working on so far. I realized that this uh, Dodge Caravan is a lot smaller than the previous one I had. I lived in the previous one I had for a couple of weeks while I was waiting for uh, the money for this house, you know, when we, when Wyle and I were trying to buy this house, and um, I was kind of staying in a bad situation with some people who, um, it was really difficult to stay there, so I decided to stay in the car for a couple of weeks. It, it was really not that bad. A queen size air mattress fit in the back. Um, and uh, I had plenty of room. But I realized that this vehicle is a lot smaller. Um, the other one was a Dodge Grand Caravan Sport. This one is a Dodge Grand Caravan um, American Value Package, I think, or something. But anyway, here's what I got so far. Here's the toilet. Um, I decided not to go with a regular five gallon bucket because I'm an older person and getting on and off the bucket was going to be a little bit difficult. Um, it was a little bit wobbly. I tried them out in the store. Um, it was a little bit wobbly. But what I came up with and this idea I got um, when I was out in Colorado last year. Um, somebody had done this um, with a I guess you would call it a handicap commode. It, it was like the larger one that had the handles on the side. And I thought that was really great, but I found uh, something a little bit smaller, but just as sturdy. And this is, you can see it has rubber feet on the bottom. Um, it's foldable. It has a little lid so it can actually turn into a shower seat as well. Um, but this is, um, it's just basically going to go over any other kind of bucket. I attached this bucket down here. I attached that one on there with bungee cords. Um, just to keep it covered and then there's just some um, uh, compostable bags here these um, these bags will decompose these are biodegradable and it can it can operate without this bucket in place because it has a little ring which holds the bag in place and then I'm going to just use cat litter just going to use scoopable cat litter for now and then when this one runs out I'm going to switch to a biodegradable um, scoopable cat litter that I found. I'm going to try that and see how that one works but I know this brand works because I've used that with a cat before so basically it'll be it'll just have cat litter in here. Um, it's not easy to stand up in here and it's a little bit hard to to move around because it goes at an awkward angle it kind of goes like down a little bit it's weird so this is going to be for my wastewater um i have a i have a funnel that i can put in here this was where the wastewater will go um this is six gallons um which 
should be okay um, if it's dumped daily for the most part. I will be using biodegradable soap, so I'll be able to just dump groundwater, um, which if it's done correctly is not illegal. As long as you're using um, biodegradable soaps and only dumping um, small quantities, and as long as you're not dumping in like the middle of a parking lot or somewhere, um, it, it's, it should be okay. Um, otherwise it would be dumped at a dump station. Um, if I had gone with the other toilet, um, the one that had the, um, the real camping toilet, the one that had the um, compartment on the bottom, that one would have had to be dumped at a dumping station. Um, the compostable toilet that I wanted um, is like $1,000. And that one has the little, um, the little separator where you can take in the, the urine to any public restroom and dump in there. But that'll be, that's not something I can afford right now. I'm going to sit on this toilet for a minute. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I can sit on it, but I still have to uh, hunch over because I still can't sit up straight. I'm, my head is totally on the, um, on the top of the, of the vehicle right now. Um, I'm going to come out of here for a minute because I can't stand up straight. For now, I have to, I have no choice but to keep Allie in here. Um, she needs her crate when she's driving because um, she just doesn't do well. She gets too nervous in the car. Um, this is a little desk that I got off of Amazon, which I'm gonna try out. I have also this bar, because um, I'm trying to figure some way to hang the front curtain, the curtain across the front. Um, so for now, I have, uh, I have a stove. This is what I'm gonna cook in. Um, this I didn't get the I didn't get the um, USB not the USB the um, the DC powered one because it didn't get very good reviews I, I think it didn't heat up quite as well so I got this one which I'll have to run this is the Hot Logic Mini um, and the way this works is you just put your food you get like frozen meals and you just put them inside it's like a warming plate and it heats them up it takes a couple of hours I tried it out in the house and it works really good it takes about two to three hours to heat stuff up so obviously we won't be hooking into the car battery and running that because that'll it'll be a drain on the battery so while the car's running it would work great but i'm still looking into getting the solar at some point um, or the, sol the solar uh, generator so for now we'll be sleeping in the driver's seat um but here's a little desk that i got really not stable as I thought it was it's really not all that good and it's like a little airline tray table okay let me get out of here yeah I'm gonna go around back for a minute and show you something back there um, so the the caravan is doable as far as to build a bed in, but not with this crate here. I have nowhere else. I tried so many different things. I tried to put this crate in so many different ways. Um, about the only thing I could do is maybe try to take out the front seat, the, the passenger seat, and put the crate up there. That would be an option. I'm not really sure. Although, I don't think the floor would be very flat. And unfortunately, right here, the floor is really flat. And I have this bungee corded down. I recently got um, the ratchet strap or the uh, cam buckle strap. And I have it secured a little bit, a little bit better with that. Let me go around the back here for a minute. This is what they've done with this lot across the street. There's usually about seven to 10 of these big dump trucks back there. You can see they just re-extended. Uh, they just dumped more dirt and extended it. I guess they're gonna go all the way across. It's really horrible to live across from this because they start up the engines really early in the morning. They make a lot of noise sometimes on the weekends. There's a new business in here now and there's a new business in here, so. So I have, have, I don't have that much storage in this car. Um, I'm probably gonna go ahead and put some of the plastic containers in here. I do have basement storage underneath 
um, they call it a basement. I have I have a little door that opens up underneath this container and over there, um, which I can store some stuff in. Um, if I were to do a camping cot or build a bed in here, then it would be a little bit more difficult to get to that. Um, I'm going to wait and see about building anything. As of right now, I can't build anything because I still have Allie's crate. But this back curtain, when it when it's open, it comes down, obviously straight. It comes it comes straight down here, so it only covers like right to here. So I can do one of two things. I can try to take the end of the curtain and maybe hook it onto here, so it gives me a little bit more room inside. Or else I'm going to have this. I'll have like this much space that's not covered. But these seats down here, these these seats are fold and go. The other seats I've had to take completely out. Those are those are in storage. These seats here, the back bench is fold and go, and I have them down right now. And I tried to take them up. I, this one moves. The, the this side moves. It's like a 60/40 split fold down. This one I can get up on this side. This one is stuck. Um, what I want to do is just go somewhere and have these completely taken out. Because if I do, I'll gain about this much. I'll gain about 16 to 17 inches into the vehicle. And then I'll gain about um, maybe uh, 6 or 7 inches down into like a well, like a, a recess. So I can put this and I can put the water. Um, possibly the toilet which would give me like a little bit more headroom using the toilet in here. Um, but then there's the issue of the curtain, because like I said, the curtain only, like when the curtain falls straight down, it only covers, um, like th there's like this whole area then would be uncovered by the curtain. So I, people would be able to see like right in the window and see what I was doing. <laughs> so if I were gonna put the, the toilet into the recess area and give myself a little more headroom, then um, I would have to definitely attach the curtain against the door somehow so it stays, it stays back. Um, but I also worry that it might be possible. I'm, I'm still going to get, I'm still looking into getting the weather tech window coverings, um, uh, which would help it. Uh, I could cover the back window with that and just use the curtains, um, for sleeping and stuff like that. But if I take these back seats out completely, I can put the, I can put these containers down here in there and it'll stop them from moving forward when I'm driving. Right now I just have them bungeed on there so they don't slide around too much. But um, I can also use back here for storage. Um, I did try to repair the hitch. Um, I was supposed to move all my stuff into storage out in, uh, I was going to bring it out to Colorado uh, last year, in 2018, and I got the hitch, I thought I got the hitch repaired, um, but at the last minute I wasn't sure that it was working correctly because the battery, I had, I had put a new battery in the vehicle, <sighs> or I thought I had to anyway, I thought, because the car wasn't starting correctly, but it turns out that the hitch, there was some problem with the hitch, and this problem, I had the hitch disconnected, so I wasn't able to use it. After I came back from Colorado, I had the hitch disconnected because it was it was causing the vehicle not to start. And I thought the problem was the hitch, but then earlier this year, I was having the same issue where the vehicle wouldn't start correctly. I took it to two different places and they couldn't find anything wrong with it. And then mysteriously, after they tore it apart and put it back together, it just started working correctly. So I still haven't, I'm still not sure if I, if I hook the hitch back up, if it's going to work or not. And I'm kind of nervous to try it because if I do buy a small trailer to pull behind me to keep my clothes and stuff in, like a, like a little like four by four cargo trailer or something, um, to pull behind, I have to make sure that the hitch is not going to be an issue, uh, with the, with the vehicle electricity and the vehicle battery. Um... I thought about doing a cargo trailer to live in, but that's not the route that I want to go right now because it's not going to be very safe for me. Um, I would feel safer um, being a single woman out alone, um, you know, sleeping in parking lots and stuff. Um, 
it's going to be a little bit safer for me to be in a vehicle that I can just climb into the driver's seat and leave if I have a problem. Um, being in a pull behind, you know, I've been looking at pull behind campers. Um, this vehicle can only tow, I could probably tow like a little tab, um, and some of those are even a little too heavy. Um, I can tow like a, like an A-liner, um, which um, they're still not cheap. They're about $15,000, the little A-liners. Um, but there's a lot of issues with them as far as um, stability and longevity and uh, structure. Um, there's a little uh, ProLite 12V, which, um, which only weighs about 2,000 pounds, I think. And that one it actually comes pre-wired with uh, solar. Um, but those are about twenty thousand um, dollars. So I've been looking at like a small cargo trailer, like that you can find them used uh, for like maybe four or five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars. That wouldn't be livable because it would be like a former, it would be like a cargo trailer that was used for work, and it wouldn't have the proper ventilation or windows. Um, but I could use that for storage um, to keep my things in. Um, I wouldn't really need that much room though. There was a really good small one for $400 that was for sale in Ohio, but I missed it. Somebody bought it. Um, but I can still fit a lot in here. I, I need to keep that area clear. I can still just get some totes in here. Um, the refrigerator, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm either going to put the refrigerator down in the recess or over here against this wall, which would make it a little hard to get to the toilet. But it depends on which refrigerator. If I make the investment in the one that I want, which has a freezer, the, the little Dometic or the Winter, it's significantly bigger because it's meant to go into a, a bigger van. Um, right now I just have a cooler, which is not going to work out really, really well because it's a cheaper cooler and it, it I would need to be replacing ice every day and I would prefer not to have to, to do ice or spend money on ice. Um, I, I've been looking at a couple of smaller refrigerators on Amazon um, that are 12 volt. Unfortunately, I have a I have a 12 volt plug back here, which I can use. Um, there's a couple of smaller ones, but they don't have freezers. And since I have to rely on eating frozen food mostly, um, like meals in a box or something, to, to cook in this little oven here then I kind of have to have a freezer. So I can either have, if I buy those that little fridge, I can either have it as a freezer or a refrigerator. It's like one or the other, not both. So that would make it a little difficult. Um, looking at getting a little 12 volt coffee pot um, or water boiler, because I don't use coffee pots anymore. I only boil water and make the coffee in the, uh, in the French press and that can go up front. Um, it won't be storing a whole lot of food um, because bears will be an issue. I don't want to have, uh, I'd, I'd really like to get a Yeti, um, like those uh, sealable Yeti coolers um, that they have at Academy because those are actually bear proof. They're marketed as bear proof once they're closed properly and that could be for dry food storage. I actually don't eat a lot anymore um, because of my PTSD. Um, I just kind of lost interest in everything in life. Um, I don't eat very much anymore. Um, I eat to live only. And I really don't eat anything uh, yet. Surprisingly, I'm gaining lots of weight, but I've, I've since learned that it's because of um, adrenal glands and stress that uh, that's causing me to gain the weight. It has nothing to do with what I'm eating because I actually don't really eat anything anymore. I kind of don't really care anymore. I used to enjoy I used to enjoy eating and I don't anymore. But you can see here a little bit better on the curtains. Um, the back the back channel was a little bit easier because I could get the bungee uh, the, um, the the binder clip directly into the channel so it holds it up a lot tighter and then I used the bungee cords and the paracord to to tie it up. So unfortunately it's a little bit labor intensive to put this down and take it up. And the curtains are really heavy. I had them cut in half and because originally they were, you know, house curtains and they were folded in half. 
and I had somebody cut them in half and then sew like a little um, a little hem on them so they were a little bit lighter because I tried to hang them in so many different ways and they were just too heavy I don't want to do a permanent attachment I know I could do like um, I could screw a curtain rod in or I could screw a rod between the um, you know between each window I could go between each each plastic channel and like attach something with a screw um, would prefer not to do that right now um, just for resellability on the vehicle um, because eventually I really do need to get something that I can stand up in I would prefer to get something that I can stand up in so I've gotten a lot of ideas. I know I know a lot of the ideas that I've seen require a little bit of building. I know I've seen people build a shelf uh, over this area back here so that they can still utilize the storage underneath, but they have like a little desk there that requires building. Um, again, the floor in this vehicle is slanted. You, I don't know if you can see it here, but it goes down from here where, where I'm standing. It goes down into about where the dog crate sits. And then it gets uh, flat for a minute, and then it goes up at an angle to where the um, the other seats um, are supposed to go. So it's not a really good floor for sleeping on. Um, it would require, um, if it was going to become flat, there, whoever, if somebody were to build this floor, they would probably take the bottom seats out and then make a hinge here so we could access the bottom. Or, or just leave like, um, I've seen them build legs over here and that way you access the bottom storage from underneath like a, like a platform over here. Um, I've seen a bunch of different ideas. I've seen a bunch of different vehicle builds on, uh, on YouTube. Um, this idea, I don't remember where I saw this. Yeah, I think I saw this on, on YouTube. Somebody hang the paper towels. I don't know why because I really don't use paper towels. I bring them with me. I guess I had a, a roll with me when I was traveling uh, because of the dogs. But um, another thing I saw was to hang shopping bags off the back here. There's the other curtain for the front that was supposed to go across the front. Hang shopping bags here to keep stuff in. Um, I have one over there too around the back. Um, so that's what I'm working on so far. Um, it's doable in this vehicle. Um, eventually, I really, really would like to have something I can stand up in, though, because my back goes out all the time. I also have developed an issue with my legs. I don't know if it's circulation, but sometimes my right leg just gives away, like from the knee down to the ankle. I'll just have like a sudden, like loss of feeling, and my leg just goes out. And it's also really, really hard for me to climb up into this. Um, and it's also really hard for me to climb around the front fr from the front seat into the back from this one. I'm not I'm not young and limber anymore. You know I can't climb very easily. So um, eventually, I would like to have something that I can stand up in. That's that's the goal. Um, you know this one has great. Um, stealth ability you know I could basically probably you know if it was just me but having having the dogs is going to be a little bit harder because um, they they might make a little bit of noise so somebody might know oh there's somebody sleeping in there there's somebody sleeping in that vehicle um, it's technically not illegal to sleep in your vehicle in this country it just depends on where you park um, that's what I've been researching and that's what I've been learning about and um, there are still a handful of places that do make it easy for people to um, overnight in their parking lots. A um, couple of really, you know, uh, you know, Walmart obviously is one of them, but Walmart has been really revising that policy with a lot of stores, depending on what neighbor, what kind of neighborhood it's in. But because everybody's doing it, Walmart really attracts um, kind of a a little bit of a rough crowd. If you watch YouTube videos, you can see a lot of people have um, problems overnighting at Walmarts, um, which is why I prefer to be in a vehicle that I can just get in and drive away. I don't want to have to get out of a camper um, or out of a, a trailer that I'm towing. Um, I don't want to worry about, you know, somebody messing with the hitch or messing with the vehicle or 
Um, and then having to move the dogs, you know, if I have to get out of a situation in a hurry, in an emergency, I prefer to just be able to get into the seat, turn the key, and drive away. Um, that would be ideal. So this vehicle obviously would have the best gas mileage, it has the best stealth ability, and it also has the best, um, uh, it can go anywhere. Um, there, there would be no, no problems taking this into any big city. Um, one of the things that I hope to do first, when I first get on the road, is to do, um, I'm going to come in here for a minute, oh god, I'm going to sit on this toilet, well, the back is open. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention about this toilet, just let me go off uh, segue for one second, the other thing I forgot to mention about this toilet is, it is possible to use this as a camping toilet to where you can use it outside and dig a hole and go directly into a hole so there are a lot of camping toilets that are marketed just like this um, that you just put over a hole or you put over a bucket unfortunately this one was too short to go over um, a regular five gallon bucket this is actual toilet height this is 16 inches off the ground which is actual toilet height um, for a standard toilet um, therefore, a Lowe's five-gallon bucket um, was too big, so that was why I had to come up with this smaller bucket. Um, but you could theoretically use this right over a cat hole, or it could be used in like one of those little privacy tents. But the other good thing about this one is it turns into a shower seat because it has this cover with holes in it. And since I am getting older and having a harder time standing up, this is something that would be really good to use in, in a shower as well. Um, but as I was saying, one of the first things that I want to do when I go, when I first go on the road is I hope to, um, I'm working with a couple of different groups and I hope to be able to go on like a book tour. Um, I don't expect my book to be a fantastic national bestseller. I know it's not going to be. It's a personal story that I'm telling, um, however many people are relating to it. And I really would like to go on a book tour, which would be a slash, um, uh, meet up, meet and greet in kind of different places and just organize with like different individuals, men and women who have been um, victimized by narcissistic personality disorder individuals um, and really just kind of start like a, a big national conversation. Um, there's, there's tons of conversations going on. Oh, oh, I can't stand up. There's tons of conversations going on all over the internet, um, but there's also a lot of misinformation, and I think I would really like to try to get the conversation moving in a different direction. Uh, there's a couple of individuals that are over in the UK that are really working on different things over there, but unfortunately their laws and their systems are working a lot differently than our system works here in this country, so... I'd like to try and take what they're doing over there and maybe connect with a group of people who can get things going over here in the right direction. But anyway, that's the update on the vehicle. So I'm taking the um, the bus off of the off of the GoFundMe because the bus has actually been sold. So um, the the bookmobile bus that I wanted to buy that has been sold actually that was sold really quick actually right away before uh, Like I, I think I only had the the fun going for like a week and it got sold but oh, I am looking at a couple of other Other vehicles that that might uh, work That might work out well for this type of thing so that's it for now. That's the update. The weather's getting nicer now, so um, I've got to get out of here pretty soon. Looking to get out of here um, probably by midsummer, by the end of the summer. Um, we'll be spending the summers in the higher elevations, so probably Colorado, probably uh, Willem Park area. Uh, that way, I'm in uh, not out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but higher elevations, uh, definitely for the summer. I, I don't feel comfortable. Um, is there, I know people were asking about heaters, um, the Mr. Buddy heater. 
um, and, a, and a camping stove. I probably will, um, I know I have on my Amazon wish list, I have the Mr. Buddy heater and the camping stove, but I'm not really sure that I feel comfortable using those in the vehicle. Um, I definitely don't want to be getting into having to use propane um, to cook with because I think that's a little bit dangerous with the dog if it, um, if so, you know, there's too much that can easily catch fire in here. And I don't cook anyway, so I'm not really worried about it. That was why I decided to go with the Hot Logic. I just really don't cook. But I might get um, a small one burner, um, maybe propane slash butane that I can use. Um, if I'm outside, maybe if I if I have a, an emergency, if I don't have enough uh, electricity, if I don't have enough solar to, to run the uh, solar generator, um, I can have that in a pinch for an emergency. Um, and the Mr. Buddy heater, um, I'm definitely really on the fence about that. I think probably I will say no, that I don't want to go with uh, using propane. Also because the Mr. Buddy heater really tends to burn you out after like a minute. It gets too hot, then you have to turn it off, then you're back at square one. So I'm looking at doing uh, like sub-zero sleeping bags <clears throat> that will, um, I saw a woman actually living in Denver in a vehicle and she, she goes between Colorado Springs and Denver and she, um, she uses just a, a minus zero sleeping bag and um, a flannel blanket and also goose down and then there is also electric blankets also that um, are probably a better option than trying to heat your vehicle of course it sucks when you wake up or if you have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night um, but again getting into a bigger vehicle i can um i can take care of that by installing um by installing uh, like a you know they, there's some vans that have heated floors and uh, little basso heaters that especially if you get a diesel vehicle that go directly into the diesel tank um, installation is also another thing and in a little minivan here without tearing the headliner off without tearing off all the sides without tearing up tearing up the floor um, there's no proper insulation in here and there's also a lot of windows uh, there's a lot of windows in this vehicle uh, the weather tech is definitely going to help because that's going to cover every single window. Those are custom for uh, this vehicle and they are going to cover every single window um, with um, Reflectix. So that will definitely help a little bit. But that is it for now. That's the update. So if you can, please consider helping out. I am going to be moving into this vehicle. I still eventually will want to get... You know, hopefully being out of the house, um, once I can get the IRS paid off, because I'm going to owe them a ton of money again, because <clears throat> being an independent contractor, I don't make that much money. So I don't have any money extra to, set, to put aside every month and send to the, you know, for my taxes. So I end up getting screwed at the end of the year. Um, of course, being single, I get screwed by these tax changes. Um, it was absolutely ridiculous what I had to pay last year. And again this year, you know, we're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars that I'm going to owe again. Uh, once I once I stop having to pay all this overhead, having to pay on a house that's pretty much not, I'm not really using anything. I barely move off the couch. I live on the couch. Um, um, I've been selling lots of stuff in here. I still have um, the couch, the coffee table, um, the kitchen table I still have. Um... I haven't been able to sell my books. I did pack the books up and uh, sell the bookshelves. I've been selling other furniture. Um, so little by little, everything's going. I, I am going to have a small, uh, I am going to need like a small storage area, uh, a small storage room for now until I can figure out how to sell. Because I just don't want to throw stuff away again. I, I, I did that last time. Um, but I'm selling everything, you know, getting rid of quite a bit of stuff. Um, But yeah, that's the uh, that's the update for now. Anyway, thank you for watching and thank you for helping out if you can.